it's, it's just, it's, it's really just, it's crazy to have that big of an impact, I think, on people. I know, you know, there's really, there's like Hendrix, Clapton, people like that, you know, there's not many of them. There's not many of them. And he's, he's definitely one of those. So I think it's just, it's just really sad. And it's, it's, I think as a musician, um, I think it's amazing to see, you know, after someone's passed, just like having that huge catalog of work left, like he's going to inspire generations of guitar players for years and years and years and years to come, even though he's not here, which I think is just really, really special and cool. And, uh, just just goes to show you like how powerful it can be just to pick up an instrument and and play something new play something cool play something real to you um but other than that all i can say is i think it's just it's just real sad you know yeah i mean it's all legacy uh you know i mean hendrix um i'm pretty sure he had influences from hendrix and then he yeah. I said i say he kind of cranked it up to 20 uh yeah. with his guitar playing and then don't what don't probably be somebody somebody that'll that'll take it to the next level you know i mean there's always there's always the next guitarist that 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 gets seeks inspiration and and does some some new twist or something like that on it yeah. so you know yeah. i mean it and and he did leave a really huge catalog behind him which i think will influence yeah. generations to come so yeah, yeah. i just he was he passed but at least we had him when as long as we had him so yeah uh, hopefully yeah. we'll get to see, see some more of that as well yeah i mean we, we talked or you talked earlier about being producing is this album and being in studio and can you tell me a little bit about some of your first experiences in the studio and what kind of the things that you've learned over the years once you yeah. uh, became a producer yeah uh, well i think first i think i was really lucky because when i was maybe maybe 10 maybe i was that young um there was this brand new studio that opened up in oakland um, which is still there and it's it's a just a wonderful place called 25th street and um uh i was one of their first clients and i was just playing you know the <laughs> silly songs that that i wrote when i was a little kid but but i really learned how to record there and there was an engineer who worked there who was who was the first staff engineer by the name of scott bergstrom who still a great friend of mine we still work together just because you know i've known him since i was a little kid and really, I would always come in with these ideas every time we like recorded a new song. I would go like, how do we, how do we get the snare drum to sound like this? Or how do we record my guitar amp this way? And you know, whatever. And uh, he would always work through the process with me when I was a little kid of getting that sound and, and you know, making it sound like, you know, I was, I was hearing it in my head. And even, you know, until I was probably 18 years old, the last big record we made there was a record with my band uh which was called the blondies and i produced that and i had you know i was very into like beatles type sounds at that point in time and we just like went totally you know full throttle towards these like tea towel dead drums and like you know we had the whole room set up almost like you know abbey road was set up you know back in the 60s and really just all those years of of recording there and tremendous amount of gear at my disposal which I didn't realize how lucky I was with that until you know I got older and I realized oh not everyone has a fair child in their studio and not everyone has you know a beautiful API console to work on and all these microphones and I just thought that's what studios were like when I was younger because I had only experienced this one and now I realize you know being uh, 22 and, and realizing that so many people my age haven't had those experiences and don't know how that equipment works and haven't been able to mess with it as much as I have, uh, you know, it's, it's now really clear to me how special that was. So I really, I really learned just by trial and error doing stuff there for the most part. And then, you know, as, as I grew, I, I started, started collecting my own stash of recording gear and equipment. And now I've got a studio of my own that is filled with a lot of my favorite pieces that, you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm always collecting more stuff, but, uh, is filled with a lot of my favorite things that that I'll mess with, and and oh, honestly, a lot of the stuff that you hear on my record now is is recorded at my place, which is which is really cool. Um, but uh, I think when I was, you know, a kid and growing up loving Bob Dylan, loving Eric Clapton, loving the Beatles, I didn't, you know, to me the digital realm 
wasn't as big of an interest. I loved analog equipment. I saw them recording with it. I saw the old U47s and the pictures of Dylan and the Beatles. And I just wanted to use that stuff and get those sounds. And so when I started recording, I was like, how can we place mics to make this? How, you know, how can we, uh, how can we use compressors to do this, to do that? And, and uh, now being older and realizing that most people, uh, at least who I've grown up with, their capacity is more uh, geared toward the digital realm of things and they don't know as much how to do that, you know, down and dirty, like placing mics in front of kick drums and tuning drums and, and just like, and getting crazy amp room noises. I realize now how valuable those skills are. And, uh, but to me, like, again, that's just how I thought music was made for everyone. Is you, you went out there and you placed the microphone. And me growing up doing that has led to just a consistent accumulation of knowledge about that kind of stuff that's, that's now built up over the course of a lot of years, but also um, just a, a really, really deep love and appreciation for, for gear and different microphones and, you know, different pieces of equipment that now I kind of treat like instruments too. And I think that just led me to, to being a producer where a lot of artists are just sort of the artist and write. To me, production is, you know, part of painting the picture. And I couldn't call myself the artist, in my opinion, if I didn't also have a large hand in that production part, because I, you know, not only do I want to make the outline of the picture, but I want to fill in with all the colors. Um, and I usually hear in my head when I write a song, how I think it should be produced up, how the instrument should sound, whatever. So that's just been a part of it for me. And I, I, I hope it will continue to be a big part of it for me because it's real, it's, it's real magical, at least, at least for myself. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, as as much as technology has come to, to try to mimic some of the some of the sounds we may have had back in the uh, in the in the fifties, sixties, and seventies, um, there is still that kind of um, you know that kind of thing where um, what do you say? Um, there's that kind of thing where there's you know there's that sound that you just sometimes just cannot cannot do on a you know do on a digital digital format. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. sometimes. Sometimes, you know, I, I do, I do hear stories of artists wanting to use older, older equipment just because they want a certain kind of sound to go yeah. through that as well. So yeah, you're, when yeah. you say that they are actual um, tools and possibly, I guess, being, you know, almost instruments in their own right, the way yeah. that they make sound, I can understand that as well. So it's great to be able to hear that, you know, and hear that from, from somebody as young as yourself wanting to uh, kind of dig back to some of the, some of the uh, legends and try to, you know, try to take from them some of the, uh, some of the techniques that they've used in terms of recording. And I can understand producing as well. It's like, it's like you, uh, sh you know, shading a, uh, shading a painting or, or putting up some highlights or making sure it's lit correctly, you know, right, uh, you'll yeah. have a picture, but you know, you always have to have that, that ink at some point to make sure you have to, uh, that you highlight yeah. everything, makes it just a little bit sweeter. Um, yeah. So it's nice to be able to see that as well. Yeah. Now, I said the album's out right now. Uh, the single out is Grace right now. You guys can check that out on all your uh, your digital, uh, wherever you have any music formats or whatever as well. Uh, where can we find you on social media? At Simon Lunch uh, on everything. Instagram, Twitter, uh, S-I-M-O-N-L-U-N-C-H-E. And uh, lunch, like we were talking about, is just pronounced like lunchtime. Nothing fancy. Um, but the good thing about it is when you Google my name, no one else comes up because no one else has that name. So add <laughs> uh, Simon Lunch everywhere and Spotify, iTunes, Amazon Music, anything else you can think of. Uh, Grace and the album are right there. Yep. So, yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully things open up a little bit more uh, next uh, next time around. And uh um, we can hopefully, uh, hopefully, um, you work, are you working on new material right now? Oh, yeah. I was determined not to turn back on Pro Tools for a while after finishing um, this album. But then the pandemic came and the lockdown happened. And I've, you know, I'm an artist. So I just, <laughs> I start coming up with, with ideas. And sure enough, I'm sitting here like, oh, man, I've, I've, got, I've got something that needs to come out. And I'll open back up Pro Tools. And since I've got a bunch of gear here, I'll turn on some microphones and start playing. And I think I've got. 10 or 15 demos up my sleeve right now that will hopefully be soon turning into uh, more finished recording. So, yes. Yeah, so hopefully we'll have a new album next year as well. So, fingers crossed Absolutely. on that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thanks a lot for joining us, Simon, and best of luck to you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.
You guys can check us out on social media at SWIV, at SWIV on Twitter, and somewhere in Vegas on Facebook. Also, SWIV Podcast on Instagram. You can check us out every Monday and Wednesday for new episodes. And you guys can go to the iHeartRadio app as well as Spreaker.com and other various podcast catchers. You can also check us out on Alexa. Just ask for Somewhere in Vegas. With that in mind, we'll see you guys next episode on Somewhere in Vegas.